Hello, everybody. Um, I would like uh, to introduce a project that I've done um, with uh, some friends of mine over the uh, last couple of years. Um, these friends are uh, Michael Wimmer and Anton Akmerov uh, from uh, the TU Delft. Uh, they are also present in the audience. And uh, Xavier Weintal and myself, we work uh, at uh, CA Grenoble in France. Um, so the project uh, about which I'm going to tell is called uh, Quant, it's a Python package. And you can see the, the web address uh, here. So um, it's a package about which deals with quantum transport, which is a rather specific topic of physics. So I imagine that most of you do not work in quantum transport. Um, but it could still be interesting for you um, if you deal in some way with graphs or with, with big sparse matrices. So please uh, follow a bit. So what is quantum transport? Um, quantum transport is when you study electronics at, uh, um, under conditions where, where the quantum effects uh, are important, which typically means that you are at very low temperatures, uh, way lower than, than one Kelvin, and also at um, small uh, length scales. For example, this image at the bottom shows a typical quantum transport setup. And uh, the experimentalists who do these things, they put this sample into a dilution fridge, which is shown on the picture uh, next to it. Actually, what you see on this micrograph um, is, is the top of the sample. The, the, the real conducting um, surface is buried underneath. And what you see, these patterns, these are so-called gates. Um, these are... Um, these are conducting bits which are deposed on top of the sample to, to, uh, to shape the electronic potential in the sample. Okay. But uh, how does one do quantum transport uh, numerically? That's what we do. It turns out that there is a very general model which works uh, quite nicely for, for many applications. This model is called the tight binding model. And a tight binding model is a graph which is annotated with numerical values. As you can see in the representation here. Uh, does it work? Oh, it's too weak, I think. Yeah. Um, so typically, one will have one central region, which is black here, and then the, the various cables which are connected to the small sample are represented in the numerical model by periodic graphs, which are infinite. Here you can see always two periodic cells of each of those. And an annotate, a graph that is annotated with numerical values actually corresponds or is equivalent to a sparse matrix. And so uh, basically when you define this graph, you define a sparse matrix. And then having this matrix, you can calculate values, observables, like uh, band structure, conductance, what physicists are interested in. So how to do this uh, nicely in a Python package? There, there have been dozens of packages for doing this. Every PhD student uh, has his own little code for doing quantum transport. But there was no uh, package which would be general, Pythonic, and fast at the same time. And so we tried to make one. And I hope I can convince you that uh, these three statements are true. Uh, so the idea is that. Uh, you have something in mind, some, some setup like drawn here. Um, you write a, f a few dozen lines of code, ideally, and then uh, you get uh, results like this. And um, in order to, to um, um, in order to be both general, Pythonic, and fast. Um, we, we try to come up with a, with a um, it's important how you structure your, your software on the, on the top level. And uh, you see, oops, um, our project deals with these graphs, which are actually very simple objects. But as I will show you, 
creating such graphs in a general way uh, from scratch involves uh, um, it's not always very straightforward and uh, that's why we decided to, to structure the package in such a way that there is a central low-level format which uh, is simple and can be queried by, uh, by solvers which calculate uh, the, the, the observables that uh, one is interested in and there is a high-level builder which is used by the user to create uh, the, the systems, these graphs, and um, the low level, the simple low level format is uh, kind of the result of a compilation of the, of the high level, uh, of the high level builder. So, uh, quant is fully general in terms of, uh, in terms of the models. You can, you can build graphs in any dimensionality of any shape. There are no restrictions with regard to number of dimensions. It sounds kind of obvious because it's an obvious way to do, but um, for various reasons, the, the packages which were available before, they had various restrictions, like you could only have 2D systems which were, uh, which were quasi one dimensional. This is related, for example, to the numerical methods which were used to solve them. So to just give you a, a glimpse how, how it's used, and to convince you uh, that it's Pythonic, um, I would like to show you some simple scripts. So these scripts are always complete Python scripts. If you have quant installed, you can just run them. Um, and they are constructing var various systems. So here we are constructing the little graph which is shown on the right side, which is indeed very trivial. It's just two points con connected with a line. And um, in, uh, in the problems that we deal with, these, the points of the graphs often live on lattices, 2D or 3D lattices. And uh, that's why we have uh, an abstraction for, for, for lattice. And here, the blue line, which you can see, I, I construct, um, I make an object which represents the infinite lattice. Um, then the red line is the creation of, of, a, of a quant builder, which is an empty graph. And then um, the creation of the graph is done. Um, the, the graph um, that you create is, is the Python mapping. So it works like a, just like a Python dictionary. You can see that uh, here in the square brackets, I'm, I'm, apply, I'm, I'm using the lattice object giving it a tuple, I'm just, I, just uh, I just call it with a tuple. This gives me, a, evaluates to a site object, and then I use the site object as a key. So in this line, I'm creating these two nodes of the graph, okay? And uh, I assign them some value. In the same way, I could delete them. Everybody who knows how to work with, um, with uh, dictionaries in Python will, will be familiar with, with this way of creating graph. And please con um, compare this to the way graphs are created, for example, in, uh, in a package, package like Network X, where we have lots of various methods with arbitrary names. Um, okay, and then once we have these points, we want to connect them. That's uh, what the line does here. And uh, here I use as a key a pair, a tuple of two sides, and uh, it creates this copying. Okay, so this is a very, very simple example. Um, now, like in, if you would like to create more complicated graphs in this way, it would be rather, um, rather tiresome. tiresome. So, uh, we inspired a bit by the fancy indexing of NumPy. We thought, okay, um, instead of, we could accept not just uh, simple sites, but for example, sequences of sites or more complicated keys, like, like fancy indexing in, in, uh, in NumPy. Let me show you an example of that. Here, the blue is a function which designs, defines a shape. It receives uh, a, a position in 2D and returns true when it's inside the circle and false when it's outside. And now, there's a method of the lattice which cuts out 
a given shape out of the circle, and I can use this directly as a key for my mapping, for my graph. And after executing this first line, I have all the points, but not yet the connections, and the, not yet the edges. And it would be also tiresome to add them hand by one by one. That's why there's a generic uh, method which, which adds here the, f the nearest neighbors on the graph, uh, on, on, the, on the lattice. Let's make it a bit, uh, let's change it. So now uh, uh, the stuff which I changed is colored. I use a different lattice. All these lattices, they, they have names, but in principle you can define generic lattices. There are ju there's just a library of the most commonly used ones. And so I changed now the lattice type and I changed the, the function. And uh, you see, uh, it's quite a different result. Now, uh, just to show off a little bit, uh, there are other concepts which are there. For example, you can, uh, in order to make these leads which are periodic, you need to create graphs that, that are periodic in space. So here now I create a graph with a symmetry. There is a symmetry object and uh, I give it to the builder. And uh, instead of first ne nearest neighbors, I have second nearest neighbors. And uh, in a few lines, I've created a Kagomi lattice supercell with second nearest neighbor hoppings. So uh, if you try to do this uh, on paper, it will take you some time. OK, uh, so that's just a glimpse of the interface. Uh, now. Quant is actually surprisingly fast. It's faster than, than most or all the other packages, which uh, deal with the same um, uh, topic, uh, even though the mo it's mostly written in pure Python. And uh, while well, we've seen other examples uh, yesterday of, of such uh, feats, um, and uh, indeed uh, by, uh, by use of uh, strategic use of Sison and, and some C++ and by using the right numerical libraries with Python, as you know, it's possible to have something which is very competitive. And if you have, um, if you deal with sparse, uh, big sparse problems, quant could be interesting for you even if you don't do any physics, because um, it, uh, it has bindings for the MUMS library, which is um, one of the best or maybe the best uh, sparse solver that exists. And this is a full example of how to solve oh, okay, very, very small two by two sparse metrics. Um, so okay, um, I, I did a little test. Um, it's uh, three times faster than, uh, than what is in, sp in SciPy um, for, for solving a, uh, um, a metric that, um, that is 250,000 by 2,000. Uh, and uh, so with MUMS, with this code, uh, it takes five seconds on my laptop. With SciPy, it's 15 seconds. And if you go to even bigger matrices, like the ones who would need to one hour to solve, uh, it, um, it will uh, save you a factor of 10. So if you, if you regularly solve sparse matrices, have a look, please. So as I said, the project is available. Um, we are working on making better and uh, more general. For this, we have received uh, very recently a grant for the US Office of Naval Research. And, uh, and we are hiring a scientific programmer in Delft. So if anyone is interested um, or knows someone who, who would like to work on Python in science, um, um, he should contact us. Thank you. So there's time for a few questions. One question, uh, the grids that you have shown were 2D grids. Does that also work with 3D grids? You can have 3D grids as well, yes. You can have 4D grids even if you like. Just Any other questions? If not, then let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.